The Alliance for Charitable Reform is a project of the Philanthropy Roundtable that educates legislators and policymakers about the central role of private giving in American life and the importance of protecting philanthropic freedom. Hello, I'm Marcus Chavez, Director of Communications for the Alliance for Charitable Reform. Today I'm joined by Rhett Butler, Government Liaison for the Association of Gospel Rescue Missions. Today he's here joining me to discuss nonprofit issues as they relate to tax reform, as well as other issues relating to the role of religious institutions in that discussion. So Rhett, thank you very much for joining me. Thank you. Uh, now you just recently started a new faith-based coalition called the Faith and Giving Coalition. Could you tell me a little bit about that effort? We did. Um, it, the coalition is new, it's a few months old, and it's made up of national religious organizations, large and small, um, that are committed to protecting private giving and philanthropic freedom. Um, and honestly, for the longest time, I felt like the faith community hasn't been engaged in the tax reform debate, and this is an attempt to get them engaged and mobilize them and make sure that their voices are heard. So what is the unique perspective that religious organizations have in the broader discussion of tax reform and the charitable deduction? Most religious organizations rely heavily on private giving. So I think that's an important voice to have in the conversation because they have the most to lose if tax reform causes private giving to go down. And any time giving goes down, whether it's the economy or it's tax reform um, or giving is poor for one year to an next, um, services are affected. So if giving goes down, frontline services suffer the most. And a lot of religious organizations do serve people that are poor, hungry, maybe they need a mentor in their life to help them make good decisions. All of those types of things are impacted immediately whenever private giving goes down. Now your coalition has also been meeting with different members of Congress discussing tax-related tax issues, is that correct? That's correct. You know, we've been meeting with both members of the Senate Finance Committee and the House Ways and Means Committee. Uh, and the message that we've received so far is, is mostly positive. Um, I don't think that anyone has any intention of, of eliminating the terrible deduction or other giving incentives, but I think that the reality is there could be some changes made to those. Our message to them was keep the charitable deduction or other giving incentives as they are. Um, I think that the messages that we receive back, though, besides we're going to keep the charitable deduction are varied. Uh, some offices wanted to talk about how they could tweak it to increase revenue. Uh, other offices were very happy to keep it the way it is and they would support that. Um, so I think that on the Senate side especially there was a sense that a lot of deductions, credits, and other incentives would be taken out of the bill and the few that are put in the bill or remain in the bill um, would actually have some sort of change to it. On the House side, I felt like there was a lot more education that needed to happen. I think that the staff, the tax councils that work on ways and means issues have a good grasp of, of the broad data, the broad information that's available. But I think that they need to understand the complexities of the nonprofit sector a little bit more. Uh, and that really goes back to what we talked about before, where most religious organizations rely heavily on private giving. So any changes to giving affect them the most. Mm -hmm. Now, there are those that say that unless a nonprofit organization is specifically taking care of a person's basic needs, that it shouldn't really be counted as charity. Uh, what are some of your thoughts or responses to those who yeah. say that? That came up at the February 14th Ways and Means hearing, and I've seen that other places as well. I think that there is a misperception that charity is only charity if it's helping to fight poverty or some sort of, of basic human need. And of course, that's part of charity, but that's not all charity is about. I mean, historically, since before we were even a country, uh, charity was about meeting community needs. And I think that today, uh, in our modern tax code, in our modern um, civil society, it needs to be broad and diverse and healthy. And so I think to look at it as, as charity, as only serving uh, the poor, uh, while it's important, isn't all that charity is about. Now, there are also some opponents of philanthropic freedom that say that taxpayers receiving a deduction for gifts to religious organizations actually violates the separation of church and state. What are some of your thoughts on that argument as well? Yeah, actually there are organizations like the Secular Society of America that are doing meetings on Capitol Hill making that very argument, uh, saying that members ought to withdraw churches' um, tax-exempt status and not give people a deduction or some sort of tax incentive for giving to religious organizations. 
I, I think that's very false, fundamentally false, because it's based on the underlying assumption that the deduction is a subsidy somehow from the government. And that's just not true. If a private citizen gives their private resources for a common good or something that benefits the public or the community at large, it doesn't mean that the government ought to control that. And I think it's just something that has been fundamental to American philanthropy and civil society um, since the early 1800s, uh, back to the Dartmouth College case. Um, but I definitely don't believe that it's any sort of violation between church and state. In fact, I believe that the charitable production was created to establish government neutrality towards civil society uh, and not to somehow aid it in some way. Um, but again, I think that everything that happens in the public space uh, shouldn't be under government sovereignty. Um, there ought to be things that private citizens can do with private resources for public good um, that are outside of the government's purview uh, and what they have control over. Now switching gears quickly uh, for my last question, you are going to be participating in a discussion panel at the Philanthropy Roundtable's annual meeting in October. Can you tell us a little bit about what you'll be discussing there? Sure, it's, it's going to be a panel discussion on updating what's happening in Washington uh, new allies, new challenges, uh, and because the Faith and a Giving Coalition is so new, I want to talk to people about how the coalition came about, uh, what our purpose and goals are now, and some of the things we'll be doing uh, for the remainder of this year and into 2014. And we'll actually be posting a lot of those videos from the annual meeting on our website at acreform.com. So, Brett, thank you very much for joining me. Good luck in your efforts with the Faith and Giving Coalition. Uh, also, we'll be posting more videos like these in the future, so I hope you'll be able to uh, join us in future discussions as well. If you would like to learn more, you can visit our website at acreform.com. You can also find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash alliance for charitable reform. And we're also on Twitter. Our handle is at acreform.